lot of practitioners have asked us to demonstrate how you make a custom dilution of something. <clears throat> and I'm sure the public is interested in how we do this too. It just so happens that I have developed the theory that some of our patients who seem to react to particularly seeds and nuts, um, either within processed foods or by themselves, and they don't respond to the food mixture sort of writ large that we use, um, it occurs to me that they might be reacting to some of the oils within those foods, the seeds and the nuts. The oils are not well represented in the food mixture because we use like whole grains and whole pieces of things, and the oil is kind of a smaller constituent. I've also discovered that certain antigens need to be administered in kind of a naked form in order to work immunologically. Like gluten, for example, patients who have celiac disease they have not responded historically to the food mixture, which is made using whole grain samples. So I made one with gluten in isolation and it works beautifully for celiac disease. So there are just some nuances to how people respond to things. What I'm hoping with this experiment is that using the isolated oils together as an antigen mixture will work to stop the reactions that a lot of people keep having to seeds and nuts, even though we use the food mixture and their other allergies do get better. So I think this is something that's gonna be instrumental for some of our clientele. Anyhow, we're gonna demonstrate how to do this with this opportunity that we have. So we have 18 different oils we decided to include in the mixture. Some of them are seeds, some of them are nuts, um, and there's like avocado, which is neither, but they're, we're gonna call it cooking oils because these will be in processed foods, or you might use them directly, um, and hopefully putting them together, the cross-reactivity will give us a broader effect. So even if you eat something that has a different isolated oil in it, it'll still work. So we want to take a sample of each of these, the same volume of each, so they're diluted to the same degree. And I did that already in this jar. And it does not have to be sterile at the beginning, so it doesn't matter. I took a tenth of an ml of each one of these, so that's 18 samples, 1.8 milliliters in this jar. And I want to dilute it to where it's 100 to 1 dilution for each of them individually. So if there's 0.1 ml, of each one individually, the total volume needs to be 10 mLs. Because if it was one mL of each, I'd need 100 mLs to make 100 to one, but it's a 10th of that. So 0.1 mL, I need this to be 10 mLs total. There's 1.8 mLs in here now, adding a 10th of each one. So I need to add 8.2 mLs of water to the mixture, and that will make your 10 mL total. The math confuses people, so it's, it's good to go through that. I use sterile water for this because it's easier to measure. You might as well have something sterile at the beginning. We're gonna use a millipore filter at the end so that, well not the end of this, but um, after we mix it, we'll use a millipore filter so that the solution itself is sterile. And you wanna get all the bubbles out, try to be as precise as you can. So there's our 8.2. We can use the same syringe to draw it back up with because, like I said, it doesn't have to be sterile until we pass it through the filter at the end. The belief in homeopathy is that when you make a mixture and you want the water to be charged, let's say, with the energetic vibrational signature of your substances, you have to succuss it. Succuss it means you, you bang it on something. Uh, Hanneman, the guy that started homeopathy, said you had to bang it like a hundred times on a leather-bound King James Bible but I don't think that's important. And I don't know how many times you have to do it. Once might be enough, but I usually do 22 or 33 because I like those numbers for some reason. And it's banging on my hand, so. And it's all foamy. It's oil in water, so it's not really gonna mix perfectly, but that's not really the important part either. So we're gonna draw the entire volume of this up. Now this is still not sterile. This is a millipore filter. It has a 0.22 micron pore size. A micron is a thousandth of a millimeter, so that's very small. Uh, so it's about a fifth of one of those. And that's the pore size, meaning nothing bigger than that will be allowed through the filter into the vial that you're receiving it with. These lure lock on, so you wanna screw them on real tight because there will be some pressure built up. Then put a new needle on. 
Not the one I used before, so this one's sterile. This doesn't lure lock on, but there's no pressure on the downstream side of this. So this is a sterile vial. It's already labeled cooking oils 1C because this in here is already 1C diluted. So we'll see how well it goes through the filter. I haven't tried to filter oils before. This might not work as well as I hoped. That seems to be going pretty well. I probably won't be able to get all 10 cc's in there, but that's okay. The, the concentration will be the same no matter what volume I actually manage to get in there. And it's seen, if you look, the water is what's really going into the vial effectively. And the oils might not filter because they're kind of viscous. So you get pressure in the bottle. As I've got like half of it in there, there's a bunch of pressure built up, which you have to relieve. You can either unscrew this above the filter and let the pressure out, or you can pull the plunger back, but you don't really want to do it on the downstream side of the filter because then you can let air in and it's not necessarily sterile on the way out anymore. And it allows you to put more pressure in. And it's all slippery because it's oil. So I may only end up with five or six mLs at the end of this, but that's okay, hopefully, because this is the 1C dilution. And if let's say the average person responds at 3C, that's 10,000 times the volume. So if I have 5,000 or five cc's, sorry, of the 1C, that equates to 50,000 cc's of the 3C dilution. The math works in your favor with LDI. Take the time to you try really hard to get as much as you can because you don't want to have to do this over and over again. So we're going to use this to send some to practitioners so they can use it too. We'll probably send everybody a 2C dilution because if I sent every practitioner 1C of this, I'm going to run out really fast. So we'll do that. So cut this for good measure. And there's still some oil in there, so it, it makes an emulsion just briefly. <clears throat> then we're gonna dilute that further, just so you can see that too. So from 1C to 2C, this is a 10 ml volume on the receiving end, which means you wanna transfer 1 100th of this volume, so your concentration becomes 100 times weaker. So 10 ml divided by 100, you move the decimal point two spaces to one and then 0.1. So you transfer a 10th of an ml or 10 units on an insulin syringe. So we'll see how well this draws through. It's loose, it's, it's thin enough now diluted with water that it draws through the insulin syringe needle just fine. It wouldn't as pure oil. What I like to do is draw the plunger back a few times to clear everything out of the syringe. And then I leave the needle in so I don't have to take it out and worry about it getting contaminated or lay it somewhere. Just hold it in with my fingers like that. Do my 22 succussions. And then I draw the plunger back and forth a few times to make sure I have sort of the new solution unadulterated in there. Get my 0.1 mLs or 10 units and I go from 2C to 3C and so on. When you get to the point where you want to make your 0.5C kind of intermediate dilutions, what we, make, we recommend doing is to make a 1.5, so you'd have a 10 ml bottle, and instead of transferring 0.1 ml, you'd transfer 1 ml, because that way it's only a 10 to 1 dilution at the end. So you'd make a 1.5C vial, transfer a full ml into that, and then you have a 1.5. And then you can do your 0.1 transfer from that to go from 1.5 to 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5. 5. That's way easier than trying to go from like 1 to 1.5, then 1.5 to 2, because you're transferring a full ml each time and you're dropping the volume of each bottle. So I like to make the 1C dilutions and then go to a 0.5 step and go 1C dilutions, all the 0.5 steps from there. It's a lot more efficient and you use less materials. And that's basically it. I'm gonna make the rest of these. We will start treating some of our patients at the 6C dilution to see how they do once I make that. And hopefully it works for at least some of the people.